Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Prismata. I'm gonna jump in the queue here. Who is this? Giori? I've never heard of this person. <laughs> Japanese slash baby English, I like it. Uh, Wonder Boat versus the Plutes is probably cool. I wonder if Giori's on them. Not on the top live. Okay. Hunter 2. Someone's alt, I think. A fairly recent new account, anyway. Well, yeah, sure. We'll watch the rank 1 player. Sounds good. Pooch is a monster. Uh, base plus 11, though. I hate trying to figure these sets out. <laughs> Sorry, Pooch. Uh, let's watch these two. Played each of them multiple times. Uh, yeah. So, like, do you get red here or not? Do you just go, like, mono green? Mm, not even, well, it's tough because... The red advanced set units are bad against mono green. But Tarsiers are good against mono green. So I don't know. I think when you buy an Animus, you want it to be at a time when you could actually buy two Tarsiers plausibly. Uh, I sort of expect the red player to get killed here. Because the Frostbooter is doing nothing. Or not much, anyway. I don't know. I guess, like, you, you still have a lot of drones. You can Aegis every turn, but the Frostbrooder getting through your drones is going to kind of suck. And meanwhile, your opponent can still Aegis as well. But they're going to have trouble spending much of their red, so... I don't know. I kind of like Ninja's Assets position, but I'm not sure. I could be wrong about that. Maybe you just don't Aegis either. Just, like, buy drones and, like, Gauss Cannons and Force Fields and say, like, fine, spend a Frostbite if you want to reach me. I'm not sure about that engineer. I didn't think too hard about it, but it seems like you would prefer, where possible, to save the money for more Gauss Cannons. Or Conduits or something. Yeah, I don't know. This just sort of gives your opponent an excuse to use his frostbites, right? Maybe? I would just build some con uh, gauss cannons. And say, like, have fun with my drones. I don't need them anymore. Like, yeah, you'd prefer to have them, but... If the opponent spends two frostbites to get in for three drones... Or, you know, for a couple drones... Oh no! Oh no! No! This can't be right. You're, you're already so committed to green, and your blue is already dead from the frostbite. Uh, I really don't like this Blast Forge. Maybe more Gauss Cannons are losing, but in that case, like, I guess you're losing. Tough luck. I don't see how a Blast Forge is gonna help. You're gonna get, like, maybe two walls out of it before you're out of drones. What you really need is, like, just more Gauss Cannons so your opponent, you know, can't sustain this Absorb on Rhino business. Although, I don't know. Looks like they might have enough tempo to get there. But, like, imagine if we had two more Gauss Cannons. They wouldn't have this turn. They'd have to Force Field or something, at least. And now they just have, like, oh yeah, Frostbite the Wall for two damage. Two actual damage. Right? Isn't that kind of great for them? Although, it's actually only one damage, because you're not absorbing properly against six damage, so... Maybe it's fine to save the Frostbite here. Probably is. Ugh, this is just... Uh... I wanted to see how it would go, because, like, the Mono Green might still lose, but... Green blue is gonna get murdered. So I was looking forward to seeing the uh, continuation of the line that they started the game with. Yeah, I mean, 
we bought this Blast Forge to get Absorb, right? And like, that was three turns ago or something, and so far we've absorbed one. It's just been abysmal. Chronopolis. I don't think I've seen this person. Possibly Chronopolis? Uh... Well, blue, blue, red seems pretty good, and getting some green as well seems good. I assume wild drones are good. Are dead eyes good? There's no real attack here besides Arca and Bomber. So you could argue that they're good. But, like, also Wild Drone means that you can make some attack be useful earlier, and likewise Bombarder, or not Bombarder, uh, Arca. Uh, means, like, some attack will be early useful. I'm inclined to think that Deadeye is not going to be very successful here. Um, you could maybe float one, like, sorry, you could maybe buy one Deadeye and make that work. Like, if you floated four instead of buying a conduit, you could, like, two into two B into two one. But then you still, yeah, I don't know. Then what are you spending your blue on? Maybe just a splitter? You can, you can make 3 damage and 6 damage, like, all quite useful against these wilds. And then suddenly you're, like, kind of comfortably in Arca position. And if you get it before your opponent can deny, can, can like, counter Arca, it's, it's crazy good. But, like, also building up a source of... a stock of green is going to be great. Nevo's are fine against Arca, and maybe against leftover Bombarders. Um, Aegis is just, like, good. I don't know if I should mirror this third MG. I feel like just getting some more tech is pretty good. There's lots of cheap ways to spend tech. There's not any very good attackers, though, which I guess argues for the high econ. Well, there's Arca, right? Arca is a pretty good unit, it must be said. Maybe I just get red first? Like, next turn I build 2A, and then get the blue after that. Like, I was thinking blue first is fine because you want Steel Forge, and you want Oride Core, and you want Deadeye. Or rather, you kind of, like, Deadeye's fine, Oride Core is a way to spend your blue. I don't know. I think I'm gonna just do this, float for more stuff with red. Opponent wants blue first. To get the steel forge early, I guess? And they're transitioning out of wilds. There's something to that, I suppose. Maybe I shouldn't be building so many. Okay, 
Opponent's getting first animus. What do I do about that? Maybe just like 1BD? Maybe, uh, sorry. 2BD, I guess. Because I want to be able to get that Steel Forge in pretty soon, I think. Oh, wow. That's an interesting play. I ran out of time. Also, I meant A, D, 2. Well, this is too much tech. I can't do this. I don't, I don't really need the extra money from Wilds anymore. Maybe I didn't need it last turn either. I wonder, like, if this Float 6 was, like, a plan and if they're just messing with me. If, like, they wanted to make it look like Floating 6 was an accident. Like, that's what this does, right? <laughs> I don't know. If so, you know, good for you, I guess. I think just more drones is okay. I can, like, Rhino Forge Tarsier next turn. And that's three. I probably don't even want the Rhino exactly. I could Splitter Tarsier Tarsier instead. But I can't get the Steel Forge this way? Did I say forge? Oh yeah, what am I even talking about? I don't have a blast forge yet. I was like trying to figure out how to spend my blue. I can't do that. It's illegal. I don't have any. Alright, so opponent's going straight in for the bombers, which is gonna be kind of a threat against um. Not having much stuff. <laughs> which is kind of the position I'm in. Uh, I don't know. Opponent's build seems pretty okay, I think. Mm, maybe. Maybe they don't know what it is. It's gonna be tough for either of us to get bombarders. Like, can I even get Arca? I get to 7 attack and still be able to spend tech like this? I'm sort of tempted to just like go face here. Like, forget your stupid wild drones, right? Um, and then threaten to give them some more trouble later. But no, they have a splitter. They have enough defense. I shouldn't like smork down these engineers. If I do this, they have, like, the choice of killing Rhino and GNG or, like, killing a wild, and it's kind of not that great for them to kill the Rhino, I think. Because it denies them, like, the ability to hold the splitter, it denies them the ability to click Oride. They're getting some pretty great stuff if I just build a wall, and then they, like, kill wild, click Oride, and are happy. So this is a bit expensive for me, but I think it's probably worth doing. I 
I don't know. I'm suddenly feeling extremely bad about my spot. Oh my god, are they gonna be able to have eight at seven attack? They are. But I I should be in a position to counter, right? I have five attackers if I don't click the rhino. And oh my god, they have so much attack. <laughs> Just buy Arca and like that's all the money you have? Yikes. Oh my god, I'm so dead. Five, four, five, six, seven. That is not correct. But okay, that's. What they really want is to buy an Arca, right? So like. I can do this. Offer a breach for exact. And if they don't Arca now, I think they won't have enough drones to do it? No, they'll just build a wall and like my five attack will suck. Ugh. I'm, I'm gonna lose this game for sure. I don't know how this happened. Everything I did was bad and I don't know why. I just got dragged into, like, a way lower econ thing than I really meant to do. I guess my animus was too much of a commitment. And then, like, this, I don't know. I think it was still okay. Well, if, I've, if I'd gotten the Blast Forge sooner... I don't know, I wouldn't have had enough attack then. To be able to threaten Arca, which is what you really need to do. Huh. Like, I mean, like... all this defense in the set, but, like, I didn't buy any of it? I don't know about all this defense. There's some. Maybe I focus too much on breaching the enemy wild drones with this rhino. It made this turn, like, quite difficult. Whereas if I'd chosen just, like, Opponent got great value out of the Steel Forge. I was not really thinking about the Steel Forge clicks. I was thinking about Bombarder. Uh, but actually just buying a single blue and then selling it back right away to make splitters gets you to Arca like, pretty fast if you can defend with Rhinos. Maybe I also like shouldn't have been attacking their Wild Drones because that let them more easily with rhinos, right? Like, if I'd been killing these NGs, a lot of these plays wouldn't have been possible. I don't know. I just want to get into another game. Wonder Boat. Ranked, uh, top 50, I think. Base plus 10, yuck. Is there enough support for Apollo? It doesn't seem like there should be. But on the other hand, there's, like, Drake. And most of the other stuff your opponent will want to buy is bad against Apollo, right? Buying Apollo denies Sinestra's. It makes Phage pretty bad. And there's good... Soak in Aegis, and like, honestly, Blood Pact is kind of okay soak. On the other hand, maybe the, like, the red-green player can pressure you down too much? I don't know, I think Drake to sell back the excess blue is pretty cool.
But it's sort of hard to do that because you like want to buy the Apollo before the Drake, but then you have like three turns where you have or two two turns post Apollo where you have excess blue that you didn't really want. Right, the first one when you buy the Drake and then when you click the Drake. spend the blue on ebbs, but that's basically just turning it into energy. I don't know. I'm just scared that triple blue can survive long enough against this red-green rush, and then they start turning the tide with Apollo and, and uh, Drake for pressure and value. Yeah, I think that blue is good, probably. Opponent disagrees. Okay. Endotherm kit, I guess? That is kind of a problem. But to do that and Sinestra's is a lot of green. I feel like I can maybe, like, even skip the Apollo if they go for something that slow and just go Drakes and Ebb. And, like, maybe I can even pick up green and red along the way to get, like, Arms Race Phage or something before the first Drake. against someone who's got endotherm kit though because they're sort of threatening to kill you they they value it's a very slow play and so they value being given slow things Double arms race. That's too gross. Well, don't I respond to that by going for Apollo and saying, oh, thanks for all the engineers. Like, I just wall up here. game to go slowly, so I could get an Animus, but I'm like, well, god, they're gonna Sinestro me next, aren't they? No, they can't. Not against Apollo. I've denied that. They could try a kit. Well, like, I, I, I... Are they gonna double arms race again? I don't know if that's really such a winning play. I'm thinking this allows... Well, I kind of want Drake, right? And, like, if I'm getting Drake... Plus splitter. That's already 18. I don't have a lot of money left. I basically just got like a Gauss cannon or something. Or an Aegis. I think this should be another conduit. I'm gonna need a lot of soap against Arms Race. Okay, and they're making some pressure plays for sure. It's 
the amount of attack that they have is pretty frightening. But I do have a lot going on myself, I think. Not enough, it's looking like. I don't know. I just have to survive the endotherm kit somehow, and then I'll be okay. I think if I can do that, Apollo lives long enough to get value. I don't think I can, necessarily. Um, but, you know, that's my win condition, is live through endotherm kit. And then I think I'm fine. wall. I was thinking like it's preemptive defense against this, but maybe that's wrong-headed. Like it could be an ebb and... You know what I need is another Aegis next turn for sure. should have been a wall. Like, how am I ever going to live through this? Except by holding in splitters. The splitter forces them to defend more. Although, honestly, I think they should gambit. There's simply no way I'm clicking all my splitters. I'd like to try to click all my drakes to, uh, I don't know. It doesn't really kill anything very interesting. And if they reach me for the Apollo, it's lights out, so I really have to defend. Yeah. That's probably why I shouldn't have gone for Apollo to begin with, is the endotherm kit. It's just, like, too hard to play against endotherm kit without even being able to gambit at all. I guess I can gambit for three. I don't care if he breaches me for three. That's that's fine, actually. That's a good gambit to offer. I'm pretty sure we sniped the rhino here. So how are we doing? This is a breach for four, right? Which is too much. But this defends. Yeah, that's why this should have been a wall. I wouldn't even have to hold a drone here.
I can do this, but it doesn't really kill anything of interest, so why bother? No, I'd still have to hold a drone, but I'd have another dollar. I could build an NG. I think if you do this, I win. Like, Apollo is gonna really drag you through the mud. If you're not exerting breach pressure on me. I thought, I, th I think I'm losing if you don't do this. If you do this, I don't know, maybe I lose somehow, but it feels okay. Despite having thrown away a dollar on this splitter. I don't know, it made them force field or something. So, maybe it wasn't thrown away. Oh, wow. They're gonna do it. I disagree with this in the strongest possible terms. Now I don't need that blast forge anymore. But it's not it's not killing anything important to click the drake, so I might as well keep it, right? It exerts the same amount of pressure next turn. And it leaves me more blue options if I want them. I could even ebb. Well, I don't think I should. So they have, what, 9 income and I have 13? They're up on attack, but actually not by much. And my Apollo is taking away, like, roughly 5 bucks per turn. So they're, they're really working with about 4 bucks worth of actual income. Yeah, that's an exploit for one. committing to killing me very quickly. Uh, selling back two more drones this turn is really, like, a serious commitment, I think. And so was freezing the NGs if they were going to do that. I'm not sure what to snipe, like... How is it if I do this? They do have to lose a Rhino. So this defends? I don't love buying a wall. But I'm about to lose access to blue for at least a little while. Well, I don't have to click the forges if I'm if I'm walling here. Right? Yeah, I can keep the threat. In which case, why snipe the wall? Why not snipe a Tarsier? Mm. The wall denies them absorb, and it makes it 
easier to get in for more next turn. If I can keep sniping walls, it's doing like four damage. have more staying power. They ran out of drones too quick. I, I mean, really, I think they, like, they blew their frostbites at the wrong time. Was I, I think, I, I still think they were ahead at that point, as I said during the game. Um, probably no absorb is a good amount for you to have. I'll happily sell drones to buy NGs. Well, actually, will I, though? Why don't I just force field to make sure I have granularity? Cool. That was a spooky one. This is a scary graph to see, but, uh... Huh. So I want to look at this turn where they blew their frostbites. Like, was that really worthwhile? I s seriously don't think it was. Like, let's say they just didn't freeze. I don't know. I guess I've already, like, what I've done is built enough stuff that I can withstand this freeze, right? If I want to, I can pretend that all of these units are already dead. Sort of. Minus the drones, which, as long as I keep offering a breach for exactly three, I can actually use the drones. But I have to, if I hold the splitters every turn, and I have all this stuff lying around, um, I can sort of continue to offer gambits for three, and it's not really much more costly for me than them taking the breach. Hmm. Okay, so let's let's that, that's what it sounds like to me. But let, let's try to prove whether that's true or not. Also, they get to keep their uh, their forge this way as well, right? Um, I see. They have so little money that they kind of have to kill me soon, or they're gonna lose regardless. I guess is the idea. Interesting. <clears throat> and like my Apollo's gonna tax them even more. So what can they do instead? I mean blood pact, I guess. But they still should really want to click an ebb, and if you're doing that, you might as well wall. I don't know, maybe you could phage, but then you're not defended. Well, yeah, you are. Like, I can snipe one wall, go in for everything, and breach for a couple. I don't know, maybe that's unacceptable. Because I kill some frostbites, that's actually more important than Tarsiers, probably. Yeah, I don't think you can get that phage. Okay, well, uh, I guess I take back what I said about the Breach for 3 being a bad idea. They seem to be in pretty dire straits either way. But I don't know, I guess I should at least try the line, right? And see? Like, this defends. And I have to keep defending... for a lot. Um, 11 and 16 is 29, 27. I have to defend for at least 24. This does it. Right? No, 
but this doesn't do it. I mean, if I build a wall, it does, which is sort of what I had in mind as my next play. And then just end these. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know. Another corpus. And a splitter. Yeah, the breach is even worse now than it was before. So... Yeah, they're tanking for 28. I'm already, like, defended enough. Yeah, they're toast. Got it. Wow. I don't even necessarily have to offer this breach for exact, but I think I should. If they spend the bites, it's over, so... say they do this and like they go in it's clearly super losing yeah wow well that's not how i expected like i know i said at some point during the game that like hey if your opponent goes endotherm kit against apollo don't you just say thanks for all the tempo and likewise if your opponent gets arms race against apollo don't you say thanks for all the tempo but I, in the moment, I was scared it was not working out as I had planned. And, you know, in, in, in the same way, your opponent, when you buy Apollo, is saying, wow, thanks for the tempo, I'll get something really slow. Um, but I think that Apollo leads to a really long, dragged-out game, and Endotherm leads to a really short game, right? So I guess the problem was... Opponents' arms races were maybe too fast. Like, if you get the endotherm kit first and get, like, a phage or something just to bug me and, like, let you spend this excess blue, red, you don't want that. You want, I don't know. It's nicer to build arms race, like, as your second attacker, right? Kind of, in a way. Um, because you can think of it like a big Tarsier, right? I'm sure I've talked about this many times on the channel. Is like, okay, it builds three attack, but it gives your opponent four engineers, but it attacks for two on the previous turn. So it's kind of like, uh, uh, on the turn before, so... Next turn, it attacks for two, but gives your opponent two and en four engineers. So it's like, kind of like attack, giving them two health. And then the turn after, you have three attack, and two of their engineers are left. So you kill those, and you've like attacked for one two turns from now. In that way, it was like a Tarsier that costs more tech and more money. And then after the turn when Tarsier first attacks, it's like three. So cool. But that only applies if the first two damage is actually doing something. If the first two damage is getting absorbed, you gave your opponent actually four health and not just... Um, not just two, because you're, you're, like... On the turn when Tarsier would have arrived, the arms race is still worse than Tarsier. It's, like, extremely slow if it's your first attack. So if you can find some way to squeeze in, like, a Tarsier, which doesn't mind being a first attacker, and then an arms race? That's kind of cool. Um, it... Is it? I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Because in that case, like, the Tarsier is pretty bad because its first attack is... No, I mean, its first attack syncs with some other attackers that you wanted to buy anyway, and so, like, it's not wasted. I don't know. But anyway, like, getting the arms race... And then Drake and Endotherm? Like, I don't totally get it. 
it seems a little incoherent in terms of like how fast you want the game to be because Drake is all about fast. Arms race is like medium and endotherm is extremely, well, normally it's quite slow, but against Apollo, I think endotherm is actually a very fast unit because you have to win the game when it comes in or the fact that you spent all this tempo on like endotherm is just gonna lose um, to your opponent's Apollo. So I don't know. It seems like opponent's stuff was not really co cohesive. Um, and I just stuck with blue-green and built basically a bunch of defensive stuff. Uh, made a mistake, as mentioned, on this turn. Should have just gotten another preemptive wall, I think. Um, and I'd have another dollar to play with on the next turn. On the other hand, like, like I said, what did the opponent have to do about it? They lost, they built a force field because they were afraid of me clicking everything. I think that was a mistake. Um, I think they should have known I couldn't click everything. I just like, I mean, what, what would that look like for me? Let's, let's say I were to try to do it. This is what they're gambiting against, right? So let, let's actually go back and unbuild that force field. Or opponent had some lines that they considered that didn't include a force field, right? Like, this is one they thought of committing. So let's give them this. Here I am, breaching you. Oh, well, this might be a bit of a problem. It's a breach for one, but... 28? I mean, I... There we go. This defends. Lose six drones to get you for that one Tarsier. Is that worth it? Might actually be. But I don't know. Now, like... How are the attack numbers looking? I'm not feeling so great anymore. On the other hand, it's pretty hard for you to get any absorb ever, isn't it? This way? Maybe you can hold a splitter. Well, you don't even have to. Well, I guess this is again daring me to click everything, isn't it? Kill the splitter and now I breach. Now, now you get no absorb no matter what. That doesn't seem so great. This is daring me to click... Every oh, I can't even click everything because I'm out of blue, right? That was one of the problems with this line, is that I give up all my blue to reach you for that one Tarsier. Uh, so you just go like this and say, like, have fun, buddy. You know, right? Like, maybe you even hold the splitter, honestly. I'm attacking for, like, seven, maybe. Which is, like, a onto splitter. You don't want to hold, click the splitter, because then I snipe wall and you get no absorb. But, you know, this. I don't know, maybe I'm still winning, because I have so many walls and this Aegis and more drones, right? I can even actually, um, hold both splitters for free. It's not totally clear what the point of that is, but I can do it. In fact, instead of this Gauss Cannon, <clears throat> let's get a, a Forge. Oh, I'm over-defending as well. No, I'm not. <clears throat> anyway, yeah, they... This freeze doesn't really do anything, because against 8, I just want to lose wall, wall, wall. I don't know. It's sort of hard to see this going anywhere for them, really. So maybe they were right to not gambit. I don't know. Seems like the game was sort of lost, apparently. Like, who would have guessed that just getting an Apollo down was enough to win this game? Me, I guess. That was what I guessed. It worked. I did it. Hooray! All right. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.